somebody, hey, 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 feet. <laughs> okay, and now just laugh. Okay, perfect. Hey guys, I'm Matt. Um, I actually did wildlife here in Sherwood uh, for a long time. Um, anybody have friends that have done wildlife here before? Anybody been to Washington Family Ranch uh, at that camp out there? Awesome. Well, uh, yeah, I, I actually helped start wildlife here in Sherwood uh, at Laurel Ridge and then at Sherwood Middle School. Um, but I'm going to talk to you guys today about Larry the Leopard. Uh, but first, before I do that, have you guys ever been picked last for a team? Raise your hand if you've ever been picked last for a team. That feels terrible, right? Well, let me tell you about a time when I was picked last by a team. Uh, let's take it back to the year 1999. There should be a slide up there. It's in the... There it is. Okay, so cool. In the 90s when I was a kid, Pluto was still a planet, if you believe it or not. Uh, we had push-ups, and they were awesome. Uh, DuckTales was the coolest show. It was about these ducks that were just like rich and famous. Uh, the Simpsons was still going. It's actually still going now. Crazy oh stuff. Color. The Super Nintendo. Anybody ever played Super Mario World? Yeah. Best game ever, right? Okay. Game oh, that just came out. There was like all that and uh, some weird video games and all that kind of stuff. Nickelodeon was cool and not as terrible like it is today. Uh, so basically, my childhood was awesome. Also, the year 2000 was just coming around. Anybody heard of Y2K? Y2K! Dude, it was the freak out of the century. I'm not even lying. And basically what happened is my grandparents uh, kind of thought that what was going to happen was everybody was going to turn into zombies and people were going to start like robbing places and it was going to be like the apocalypse all over again. So we raided Costco and our whole two car garage was filled with nothing but like beans and toilet paper and uh, all this other kind of water, milk, all that kind of stuff. And the cool thing was we didn't have to buy toilet paper for the next year. Uh, but we didn't have anywhere to park our cars for a year too. So, you know, there's a handoff on that. Basically, I want you to picture like the nerdiest kid that you can imagine. Like this kid is super skinny and he's got warts on his knees and his clothes are a little bit too tight. Uh, and uh, what you're picturing there is, is pretty much me when I was in, in middle school. I was the nerdiest kid, socially awkward, uh, and I didn't really like have a lot going for me as far as you know friends and that kind of stuff. And I think I've actually got a picture of what I looked like a couple years later. It's pretty blurry, but like you look at that, that's 2001, so take that back in nerdiness like two years. I've gotten progressively cooler until today, and I'm like way nerdier. Anyway, I was that kid, and I was pretty much the nerdiest kid out there. Uh, What's your favorite subject? Anybody? Science. Science, okay. Chemistry. Art. Art. Social studies. Social studies. Lunch. Lunch, that was mine too. <laughs> Recess, that was my favorite subject. I was not very good at school when I first started. I was like homeschooled from until third grade, and then I started in like this private school in third grade, and I figured out that I wasn't really homeschooled. I was just kind of like, you know, playing outside all day and like kind of learning stuff a little bit. But I was nowhere near the level I needed to be. So I like, didn't really like school. I didn't really fit in that well um, with with classes and stuff like that. But I was I loved recess and I played like freeze tag was like number one, followed by uh, like handball. Any handballers out there? Like wall ball? Yeah. Any of that? Dude, I was a like, king of the wall ball. Like we had these rules where there's like rainbows and like corners and like all this other kind of stuff. It was seriously one of the best, uh, the best hour of the day was recess. Um, except for when we played team sports because I was always like, I like kind of, I never really wanted to play, but there were times like when everybody else wanted to play and so you're like, okay, I'll, I'll kind of play. And so there's basketball, there's football, and on this particular time, uh, a football game had kind of started out. and. The, you know, you know how it goes. You choose like the two people that know the most about football, or that are kind of like you know, kind of leading the crew. And you got them over here and over here, and uh, they start picking names, right? And so they start picking names. They're like, "I'll take Danny." And Danny's like, "Yeah, what up? Yeah, thanks for picking the first man. I'm like your right hand man." And then there's like, "Yeah, I'll take Aaron." Uh, and then Sammy, and this one, and then you know, you're kind of like when you're in that position, you're kind of like hopeful that you're like, oh, I'm going to be the next one picked, you're kind of like, hey, over here, you know, you're over here, man. Uh, and you get hopeful, hopeful, but as it goes on, you kind of get more desperate, like, please pick me, please pick me, please pick me, but you kind of like have to play cool, like, yeah, I'm, I'm just hanging around, you know, waiting, 
waiting. But it wasn't before long until I realized that I was like, there was an odd number of people. Anybody have that happen to you where like there's an odd number of people and each team is even? And what happens in that situation is either like, you know, the person takes you or they say like, hey, in my case what happened was they were like, you know what, hey, you can take this guy because, uh, you know, it'll help your team out a little bit. And then the other guy was like, no, you take him. Like, you're, he's yours, man. And well, that seems nice and everything. When you're in the position of the last guy picked, and then like people are trying to like pass you off to the other person, there's like no worse situation to be in. Here I am, the kid with like warts on his knees. Oh, I had warts on my knees too. Uh, and that was like one of the big things that was kind of like kind of gross. I think there's a picture of that too. Let's put a picture of the warts on oh. So look, like, that's a wart. Anybody had a wart in here ever? You don't have to raise your hand, it's embarrassing. But I had warts all over my knees, my left and my right. And I'll tell you what, I had them frozen off three times. Anybody have a wart frozen off? It is the most painful thing. It like, my face turned purple when it happened. Like, I went to the doctors and I was like, It was nuts. And I didn't want any of those warts on because they're gross. And people saw them and they were like, so I'm in the middle of this, you know, team thing where they're, they're trying to pass me off and they're like, I don't really want the kid with warts on his knees and has the clothes that are too tight and he's really skinny and he's not going to do, what is he going to do anyway? And I was thinking the same thing, I'm like, I don't really want to play football, but everybody else is doing it. Uh, but I was in that position of like not being wanted and I didn't feel accepted, I didn't feel like I was really needed uh, and I didn't feel, I felt outcast really, you know? Anybody else, else ever feel outcast? Like you don't belong somewhere. There was this guy uh, that Jesus met uh, with about two thousand years ago. Crazy as that seems, uh, and the Bible doesn't even give him a name. But I like to call him Larry. And Larry had this disease uh, that was kind of like warts, except for it's kind of like warts taken to the next level. Anybody ever heard of leprosy? Okay, so what is leprosy? Anybody? Yeah. Totally, it's contagious. So it's a contagious skin disease, um, and, and basically you get it by being around other people with leprosy and, and touching them and, and that type of thing. And, uh, in in Jesus' day, it was something that like you know modern medicine didn't have anything to say about. Uh, and in fact, uh, lepers would have to be outcast of society completely and put in their own colonies because they couldn't be around people. They couldn't be around other people because they would, they would get them infected with this leprosy. So once somebody, like, once somebody was, uh, was diagnosed as like a leper and they, they kind of had these spots, they were just like pretty much dead to their whole community. Nobody wanted them around. Nobody wanted to be around them. Uh, and that was, that's a pretty, pretty scary thing. And uh, to show you just like how severe, like you might wanna, not want to look, uh, but I'm going to show you a couple pictures of like what leprosy really looks like. It's not only like skin like bubbling up and that kind of thing, but you actually like lose fingers and limbs. It's like picture the Walking Dead, and uh, just take away like the bloodthirsty cravings, and you got leprosy right there. Uh, so here's one picture of, of what that looks like. So you see kind of like the boils on the skin uh, and that type of stuff, and and this guy is he's kind of like gotten deformed a little bit, um, and that's we'll call him Larry. That picture of that is Larry, and then the next one. He kind of looks like a superhero, but I bet you it doesn't feel as good as being a superhero. And the next one? And that's kind of like that same boil thing. And there's more pictures when you look at it, you see fingers that are cut off right about here that just melt away. Melt away. And so, yeah, picture, picture The Walking Dead and picture uh, that kind of look. And, and you've got it pretty much right there. Uh, a, a picture of what Jesus was looking at and what Larry was dealing with. And uh, so let's uh, actually put up the next the verse. And Matthew 8 is where we get this story from. And uh, I'll read it to you. So when Jesus came down from the mountainside, large crowds followed him. <clears throat> a man with leprosy came and knelt before him and said, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. And Jesus reached out his hand and touched the man, saying, I am willing. 
be clean, and immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. Isn't that nuts? I need a volunteer. Yes? What's your name? Logan. Logan, everybody give it up for Logan! So Logan, you're gonna have leprosy, okay? <laughs> All right, and so this is what happens uh, when Jesus comes down from the mountainside. A large crowd followed him. A man with leprosy came and knelt before him. So you can kneel before me. Thank you. I'll be Jesus. And you say, Lord, if you're willing, you can make me clean. Lord, if you're willing, make me clean. Okay, and then I'm going to reach out my hand and touch you and say, I'm willing. Be clean. Right? So stay there just one second. All right. So if I was Jesus, I would probably go around doing this a little bit differently. And Jesus heals people all kinds of ways uh, that we look in the New Testament. He's uh, healing people just by saying, your faith has made you well. Other people's faith make, make people well. Like, uh, you know, there's a couple friends that lower a guy down from his ceiling, and Jesus heals him while he's like there. He's saying, all right, you're healed. Your sins are forgiven. Uh, but this occasion, you know, if I was Jesus, and I was dealing with a man with leprosy, I would probably do something like this. Ask me to make you clean. You're clean! See what I did there? Instead of like, I wouldn't be doing this. Alright, now you're clean. I would be making him clean phrase and healing him of all that grossness, and then I would be touching him, right? Instead of like, alright, I'm going to make you clean. Alright, you're good. Give him a hand! And that's to say, that's the kind of God that we're dealing with. Uh, a God that suffers with us, a God that's human. Jesus is uh, God in the body, he's 200%, and he's always there in our suffering. And can you imagine, I mean, I thought my words were bad, but can you imagine being outcast from society, not having any human contact besides, you know, some lepers that are with you, and feeling like you are not part of the team and you're not wanted, and then to have somebody come, have somebody come to you and touch you, just to have the feeling of human touch. Isn't that amazing? Like, what do you? What would this Larry guy be thinking? He'd be thinking, "Oh my gosh, this guy's touching me." Not only he's a rabbi, so he's supposed to be like super holy and clean, but this guy comes down, and that's what we got in Jesus. He's a guy that comes down to us. <clears throat> so Jesus says, "I am willing and be clean," and immediately he was cleansed of his leprosy. That's nuts. Now, Jesus, he's with us in his suffering, but he makes us clean. In 1 Corinthians, I'm sorry, 2 Corinthians 5.17, we can put that one up on the screen. It says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old is gone and the new has come. So here's my question for you guys. What is an area in your life where you have seen God make all things new? Where have you seen that? And you can go to the next slide here too. What in your life needs God's touch so that it can be made new? And how will you apply the truths of this topic to your life this week? You know guys, sometimes it's not something that's physical. Uh, but sometimes it is something that's physical, and we need to ask God for healing. We need to ask God to, to heal us. Uh, thank God I don't have warts anymore, which is amazing, just FYI. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, that's, that's the trick, is like, God wants to be with us in our suffering, and he wants to heal you, and he wants to heal your life. Uh, he wants to heal the hurt. He's healed in me, my parents' divorce. He's healed in me the feeling that I don't belong because I know now that Jesus is with me. He's going to come and touch me, and, and, and he is with me, and I belong to him. So let me pray for you guys real quick as we consider these questions, and we'll send you out to the group. God, thank you for being the God that is with us, for being the God that